there, which is something you can do in your structured discussion groups. Um, so that means, uh, oh, I'm getting notes here as well, that we are begun in this first session. So if I go to share screen and back to my shared application, uh, let's get ourselves to uh, any version of, uh, I should have had a share screen on actually, let's just have a little look. Uh, stay on top with that. Let's get ourselves this fine and friendly morning to uh, the dashboard. And as you can see, uh, fantastic um, visuals up there. I hope you see that at your end. That's a little scene from the uh, Zairean Welsh director debut in I Am Not a Witch from last year, um, a film I would warmly recommend uh, getting hold of and watching. Um, a little bit bizarre and absurd at times, but it... Uh, uh, interrogates ideas of uh, colonialism um, and post-colonialism in the modern world. Um, I can fill you in a little bit more about that later. And here, here we have our dual courses of uh, English 2, this is technically, that we, we're doing um, for the uh, 1 to 7s, for our 102 course. And we're doing also um, English 2 there um, for the 5 to 10s with that little interweave crossover in the five to seven period. But our approach to education, as uh, we all know, is holistic. Uh, and therefore, we'll look at the syllabus. Uh, we'll look at the um, MNA plan, the syllabus for the course. Um, we're going to look at the calendar this morning. And we'll have a little look at assignments and expectations for the course. And that's going to be first up before the break. Um, also, uh, we'll be looking at um, week 15, York. Yay! Uh, which is going to be awesome for those who can come. And we'll have a look at a sign up for that. So that's our first little session. Um, uh, let's, uh, without further ado, just click in uh, and have a little look at uh, what the course is looking like. Now, I know you've all probably had a chance to um, have uh, a look around at how the course is structured. At the moment, uh, what I've done is we have a home page where you land in the modules. Uh, and um, there's always been this structure in these uh, courses. Those of you who've been here around for a while, like you, Kristen, um, know that uh, you have the modules pages. So I've put that to number one, and I've organized our courses around modules. Uh, module one in text and culture is folklore, fairy tales, and the Gothic. Uh, module two is picture books, um, and I've put down there uh, 102. Um, however, everybody's welcome. Um, it's just the set reading uh, or course reading appears on the 102 list. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't come along if you're a 502, because you did some picture books or multimodal texts last term, and I'd also, there are other multimodal texts and picture books on your reading list as well. Um, so I'd warmly recommend uh, coming along for those sessions regardless. It's no worries, Renata. Glad you're here. I was late too, in a sense. Um, then we move on to um, fantasy, uh, where we build out from uh, the gothic and fairy tales uh, into uh, uh, worlds which are more detailed however fantastical. Um, just uh, uh, just finished reading Mortal Engines, uh, first in the series by Philip uh, Reeve uh, this week. I don't have that over there, actually, in my book pile. I have an enormous book pile over there. Uh, but the, the movie is in uh, cinema theatres at the moment, uh, and I went and saw that uh, in an IMAX. It was excellent. <laughs> Uh, so I might also be adding um, some texts to reading lists as we go along. We'll, we'll talk about that as we look at the reading list because I've structured it around choice. Uh, I've stu structured it around groups of texts. So when we do do fantasy, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if people see Mortal Engines, uh, look at the books and the series. There's the series, there's the prequel series. Uh, that you might uh, find an interest, maybe want to do uh, some of your project work uh, on, on something like that. So uh, that's how we're going to structure our text. We're going to bring in uh, as many texts as possible in our different 
genres, I think we can say, that we're going to explore. Diaries and autographic novels, uh, science fiction, which is primarily for uh, the 502s because it's in your set reading. Um, but of course, the 102s are, are, are invited along and uh, we'd love to have you as part of that as well. And then we end up with animal stories or animal literature. Good morning, good old. Now, there should be uh, another module here which says uh, uh, world language, uh, which is the section of the course that you'll be doing with uh, my excellent colleague, James Coban. Um, uh, so, uh, which is also good news for me because obviously, as you know, I'm a super enthusiastic uh, literature specialist, um, though I do do uh, um, pronunciation um, and um, phonetics. Uh, but you'll be doing part of the course starting from next week with James, as we'll see uh, in in a little in a little while. Uh, uh, James is uh, not only a lovely man; he's uh, great fun. Has got a lot of experience um, working uh, in online scenarios, uh, and is going to be, you know, a really uh, great member of the team. And uh, I'm obviously super happy as well to have somebody to share. Uh, my workload a little bit and allow me to focus on um, the reading this term. So that's our modules page uh, lineup. Um, and so you can see uh, for both of you, uh, you have your respective reading lists. Now I'm, I, I'm in one at the moment. Now I went into uh, the one to sevens over here with your reading list and there are two slightly different, not slightly different, they're completely different um, reading lists uh, for each uh, part of the course. Uh, I haven't posted uh, both to either side, um, so uh, maybe I should do. Um, you all are using, on James's request, uh, Sylvian, the ins and outs of English pronunciation, which is a um, very slim volume. Um, that will help you with uh, some of the pronunciation work. Um, so that's the shared uh, book there. In terms of uh, the reading uh, modules, uh, the text and culture modules, um, folklore, folk tales, fairy tales, and the Gothic, um, uh, we've got slightly different texts on either side um, of the 1 to 7, 5 to 10 divide. So in 1 to 7, uh, you have... Um, Revolting Rhymes by Roald Dahl. Thank you, Kristen. I spent hours doing this, and it was really important to me. Um, I then chose, um, and please, if you if if you're interested in books on the other side, I'll, I, I must post the respective uh, books because you know it was, I spent a long time thinking about how this might work uh, in terms of uh, appropriate age and levels because we do know obviously that. Uh, that certain books, gosh, it's a very dark screen, isn't it? Um, sorry about that. I'm not at home. I mean, Denmark. Um, but uh, Goth Girls on there, terrible, terrible lighting. Uh, and The Ghost of a Mouse, which is a wonderful Gothic literary tale with a female her heroine. Um, and of course, it's by Poet Laureate, as he was, Ch Child's Poet Laureate, Chris Riddell, who you've probably noticed features very heavily on all my reading lists because he's a wonderful illustrator. Um, this is a tremendous book. Uh, again, multimodal uh, as pictures uh, and text are interwoven. It's beautifully drawn. Uh, and one of the wonderful things about these books as well is um, uh, they're also fun for the adult reader. Um, in Goth Girl, uh, uh, Riddell uses all sorts of literary uh, illusions. Ada is sort of based on Ada Lovelace, who's the daughter of Lord Byron, who becomes Lord Goth uh, in this story. So absolutely fantastic, for example. Um, I don't have with me Lemony Snicket, which is also in the, the one to seven reading list there. Fantastic. If you don't know Lemony Snicket and uh, a series of unfortunate events, then please make yourself aware of it. You might have seen um, the film uh, with Jim Carrey, uh, Meryl Streep's in it, about the Baudelaire children. 
the film was wonderful. It is wonderful uh, with Billy Connolly as well. Um, however, the books are fantastic. Uh, they're wonderful, wonderful for for um, readers theatre. I've got a play version um, of that, which is well worth uh, looking through uh, for drama projects, for reading out loud. And it's also something that uh, adult readers thoroughly enjoy. Um, one of the, the thrusts of Lemony Snicket is um, that there's this continuous explanation of words that runs through the texts, uh, which makes it perfect for uh, use with vocabulary. Uh, in uh, England, that would be used in a primary classroom. Uh, so I've put this in the one to sevens. I think it's challenging for primary classrooms here, but nonetheless could still be used. Um, and I've got some, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross post, of course. Uh, and as you can probably see, as I'll go on as well, Creston, is as you then go into the YouTube module for each uh, lesson, <laughs> Yes, I've been busy. So there's a YouTube module uh, as we're going to go on our next uh, link that has all the texts, um, very often audiobook versions of all of them. So uh, Lemony Snicket, The Bad Beginning, the YouTube module that's posted on both sides of the course has got a wonderful, wonderful version of that read by the awesome Tim Curry. Uh, if you don't know who Tim Curry is, uh, I'd really like to think that you will have seen the Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, because he plays the the lead. Uh, he's the, um, well, you'll know. You'll recognize who Tim Curry is uh, uh, in, in that. Uh, who doesn't love that movie? Who does not love that movie? He's, uh, uh, he's uh, fantastic, Tim Curry is, in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And his reading of Lemony Snicket is wonderful. Um, so we've got this sort of... Um, this collection of books, um, it's about choice and sharing information rather than us all studying the same book. I would rather that we have a varied experience and that's really important. Um, don't have all of these with me right now. Um, uh, we looked at Charlie and Lola. Um, from Charlie and Lola, Lauren Child went on to produce the fantastic Clarice Bean series. Um, this one, Claris Bean, Utterly Me, is fantastic. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Uh, Claris Bean spells trouble. Um, there's a whole series of those. Um, and Lauren Child then went on to do a, a sort of similar sort of uh, diary style, which is, we can say, is a clear genre in children's fiction. Um, I, I've forgotten his name. I think it's Horatio something. There's, a, there's the, the male hero. We'll have a look at that later as well in case anybody's interested in following up on that. Um, on top of that, again, it's not right here in my pile at the moment, but Chris Riddell also did the fantastic Otterline series. Uh, and the first of those, Otterline and the Yellow Cat, um, is, uh, is down. Uh, they're beautiful multimodal books similar in style actually to goth girl um shame i haven't got it right here like i said i'm uh in denmark at the moment um but we love chris riddell we love otterline another feminine hero in a diary again a child left all alone and up to her own devices um i've also included on this side jeff kinney's uh important diary of a wimpy kid which has been made into uh, a movie series as well in America. Um, so uh, here we've got that, uh, the, the diary section, which I think is sort of, uh, you know, these, these are books would, that would definitely be part of primary reading uh, in England. And I think they still belong to the primary experience uh, in Norway, because I see all of those books as five to seven books, um, because they've got enough um, picture support uh, and um, in, in a multimodal sense to, uh, to, to be read, uh, potentially even alone for, for strong readers, uh, but definitely enough to, to, to motivate reluctant readers uh, or people with like slightly slower, uh, lower competence levels. I'm going to go through the reading lists. Um, uh, I know it might seem to be wasting time, but I think it's important. Um, all of this we'll see again is on YouTube. Uh, under the picture book section, now everybody has some 
excellent picture books um, from last term. So uh, I'd like you to be uh, all coming to those sessions and bringing your picture books from last term to begin with. Here, what we've done is we've added three classics, The Gruffalo, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and Green Eggs in Ham. I'm not going to say too much more about them. If you don't know those, or wherever you're teaching, you should do. Uh, most children grow up with these books. Um, the Gruffalo, Julia Donaldson, fantastic um, author. And there's a whole series, The Gruffalo's Child. Um, um, oh, there's the one about the giant. Um, there's uh, too many books. And, and they're all amusing, fantastic. Um, uh, Eric Carl has done a uh, good morning, child. Um, that must be Charlie Ann. Whole series, um, the very busy spider, the very hungry caterpillar. These are iconic uh, childhood books. Uh, we've already dipped into as well the wonderful world of Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Zeus. Um, the genre that's missing off this list that should have been on it that I then kind of was on it at one point is comedy, um, but a comedy runs through all the books on the list. It's worth adding that at the moment, the idea is that you read one and to make sure you've got one set book from each section. Um, but that doesn't mean uh, you can't use other texts, which I've uh, tried to do on the YouTube channel, like audiobooks, samples of audiobooks, so you can listen. Um, yes, Louise, it's absolutely fine. And that's the important thing as well. We are not all reading one text. There are multiple texts of most of these books. Uh, you go to your libraries, read whatever versions you want to. OK, um, well, yeah, it, we're not doing a close reading of a text. Uh, so we all have to sh share the same text in that sort of fashion. Um, uh, and that's why I've also put up online, you know, where, where I found audio versions of books, they're up there. Um, and um, I also suggest that films are texts, of course as I think we've already pointed to. So uh, when we look at the next section, animal stories, which I think was an important part for me of you know children's literature, which is why I actually put this up as a module because there was so much I wanted to include. But as we see here as well, a bear called Paddington, which is awesome. Um, also, we have the two films with Paddington, uh, with Hugh Bonneville from uh, Downton Abbey, and uh, Paddington voiced by the wonderful Ben Whishaw, um, who's in Mary Poppins Returns at the moment. Um, uh, so obviously we have the, the films, Paddington, Paddington 2 I haven't seen. Uh, I can imagine what's going on there, but it's also good fun. So it's very engaging for children. It's something that's in um, the media eye. Fantastic Mr. Fox, uh, if you haven't this is one to seven we're going through in RTS. <laughs> and yes, it's slightly different. Um, uh, but I was just pointing out before you came and for the people on screen in the video uh, that it's absolutely fine to uh, try and cross between um, the lists as well. The important thing is we're doing similar categories. You are reading your one set text, but I'd like you to you know, really get as much exposure to other texts as possible for me. Uh, because in the end, as you teach, it's all about making choices and, you know, getting a sort of your own corpus of texts, isn't it? Um, rather than all of us doing one text together or two texts. Um, so I'm, I'm using a different approach to most other teachers um, at the moment. Um, fantastic Mr. Fox, the film version of that. Um, that must be Wes Anderson, the brilliant Wes Anderson. Um, that's tremendous. Um, George Clooney, isn't it? Um, uh, so that's a fantastic film version that would appeal definitely to older children as well. Um, but the original Roald Dahl getting, uh, in spite of his, uh, there's some rather uh, real world, suspicious real world context about Roald Dahl, the books still stand as fantastic. And uh, Christopher Robin was in the theatre cinemas uh, last year and Winnie the Pooh is a timeless classic as well. And then finally, in our final genre, this is not in order because fantasy will be doing after um, uh, folklore, fairy tales and gothic. Uh, and here we have um, Peter Pan, uh, which, there are, which there are many film texts as well that you can take part of. Some wonderful 
Louise, you were saying you got hold of one version. Some beautiful, this is a vintage children's classic. Some beautiful illustrated versions as well. Please do explore. Um, and um, for the one to sevens, I've put on a couple of rolled dolls. Kind of uh, regretted that I didn't have, um, I sh uh, I've kind of regretted uh, not having, instead of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, it's fantastic. We've got Tim Burton. Uh, having done uh, Alice in Wonderland and Charlie here as well. Um, I'm kind of regretted, A, whether you would put Alice in Wonderland on this list, but I actually thought about The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, um, the first book uh, in the Narnia series um, by uh, C.S. Lewis, isn't it? Um, so, which also has been, uh, you know, an important film series and is a timeless children's classic. Um, so if anybody's interested in doing the Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe um, with uh, the Fawn Tumnus, uh, the uh, Ice Queen and all the fantastic characters involved there, um, then you'd be free to do that. Absolutely. And you've got a chance when we do the Arbeid Krav, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, uh, you, you're, you're free to do that. And even when you do the final exam, <laughs> which we will inevitably talk about as well. Um, you can also include some of those classic texts. I see the text as a text cluster. Uh, and if you uh, are drawn out of that text cluster, I think that's great. Uh, we're exploring genres. Uh, and traditionally in this course, English 2, the one to sevens end up doing a text or a couple of texts they might never use in class, uh, which I don't think is a good idea. Um, so what I'm trying to do as well is to make sure there's enough literature to cover what is to really ideally it's too great a span isn't it of, of years we should be doing sort of one to sevens and five to ten separate um, ideally so I'll tell you what let's just um, uh, uh, go zippity dudes uh, back in I hope you don't mind me taking the time to go through all of this um, it does become a little bit dull listening to my arch criminal voice ranting. Um, I will post the opposing lists as well. Good point, Kristen. Um, I don't want to confuse you, but at the moment there's a slightly separate list and we'll have a look at that. Then everything else is the same on both sides of the divide. Uh, and I haven't had time to check it, but I think I might have got them to solve the whole group thing so you can even work uh, one to seven, five to tens in cross groups, um, which I also think is important. I don't like the fact that we have a big group and then we separate ourselves into different working groups constantly. I think there's uh, experience and perspectives to be had uh, from all parts of a holistic uh, educational process. Um, so uh, moving on then to the five to ten list, which is Sylvian as well, um, which you're doing with uh, James Coburn when you're doing the, the section that's it's called Sprok och Struktur del 2 or something like that. Uh, uh, bit of a cold. Um, it's basically pronunciation, world language, I think, of pronunciation. Um, I've tried to stress to the people doing this that uh, we don't need to do some massive phonetics lesson. Uh, because it's generally not used um, that much. And so we're going to do it on a more sort of needs to know integrated basis. Uh, let's have a look at the five to tens uh, who are also yeah, totally free to dip into that one to seven list. And I will uh, post it uh, one. Yeah, again, it's Chris Riddell again, sleeper in the spindle, which you could be doing as well if you wanted to in one to sevens because of its beautiful illustrations and multimodal aspect, which you could bring with you into the picture book section. Obviously, it's a beautiful book. Um, it's maybe a little bit more challenging uh, for younger readers, uh, as it does have a reasonable amount of text, but uh, it's definitely OK for that five to seven corridor as well. It's by Neil Gaiman, another author here. You can see him in the YouTube module. Um, that's a fantastic writer. He's down also in the fantasy section uh, with the brilliant Stardust, uh, which is uh, was uh, made into 
uh, a movie quite some time ago. I think it was the 90s now with Robert De Niro. Um, so this is beautiful. Um, we also have, uh, <laughs> there are some, there are, I'd have to say some awesome books in here. Ransom Riggs uh, on there as well. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Another Tim Burton film. We love you. Thank, thank the Lord for Tim Burton, uh, which is well worth watching with the stunning Ava Green. Um, the book is fantastic, and we'll talk more about that later. It's creepy to, to the last, hence the extension of fairy tales into the idea of the Gothic. Um, there's a, a lovely uh, section uh, in it where Ransom Riggs uh, talks about uh, what was done with the book because it's based on um, a selection of old photographs uh, that were picked out from old shops and stores. Um, and so it's got this sort of pretty much uh, creepy gothic sort of twang to it. Uh, you can see there as well from that sort of, it's spooky. Uh, fantastic book, great film, great text. Obviously, um, textually a lot more demanding. So we're going up into uh, the five to tens for these kind of books. And I don't have a copy of the wonderful Costa Book of the Year 2015, The Light Tree uh, by the excellent Francis Handinger. I think that's on its way to being a film as well. The rights have been bought up. Uh, and that's another sort of gothic, um, uh, the supernatural explained, as, as I explained, uh, as Anne Radcliffe used to um, uh, describe the gothic uh, tale. Uh, and it's a wonderful piece of Victoriana set in 19th century Britain with this sort of subtext of science and Darwinism. Tremendous book as well. Probably the most challenging of the three books there on uh, folklore, fairy tales, and gothic for the five to tens. Um, uh, you might be able to read one of them, watch a film. Say if you were to read the lie tree, you could watch Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, ready avail readily available on the internet. I think there's an audio version up in the module. And uh, Sleeper in the Spindle, you could borrow off somebody else or get from the library because it's in the libraries. Uh, and that's something that you can look at quite quickly. So that's the idea about that text cut cluster that you could maybe use different versions and access all of them. Uh, under diaries for five to tens, uh, traditionally taught for the one to sevens and five to tens is the absolutely true diary of a part-time Indian by Sherman Alexi, which is uh, another excellent sort of uh, book in the style of um, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, um, Adrian Mole, um, classic uh, teen diaries. Um, here I've put it in the five to tens because uh, generally, I, you know, when I've looked at where it's taught in the US and the UK, it's very much taught in secondary school because uh, it is linguistically demanding. Uh, it's got uh, enough, don't have a copy with it right here, uh, um, visual um, support uh, to, Are you, is that what's happening? Bitch. I am sorry, I'm recording this, uh, so if you're getting kicked out, um, uh, you can always just zip through the recording file, which I'll upload on our first break, um, so it will be available, uh, and you can, if you miss out on bits, you can always just uh, uh, f press the fast forward button on Charlie and get to the bit where you might have missed some of it, but I'm sort of going over everything almost double here. Um, We've also got um, Wonder by uh, Palacio, which has been made into um, a film w with Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. Um, I've got that film version, if anybody wants it. Um, and I love the book, love some of the issues in the book. And it's something that you can actually watch as well as a film text, whereas you might choose to read um, Sherman Alexi. Um, I've also included, don't have it here again. My bag was not big enough for all my books. The Excellent The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, which is also being released in cinemas across Scandinavia in February. Uh, it's been in cinemas in America since October last year. Uh, and that's a really cool book. Uh, lots of hip hop and awesome music in it. Um, so I'd heavily recommend that. 
you could also add to that list and there are other texts some people might like like the curious incident of the dog in the night um, but we've got that sort of base of texts there and that's that one genre the autographic novel or diaries that we'll be looking at um, moving on because it looks like I can talk for about an hour just going enthusing about books and my reading list um, this is how uh, uh, our library exported uh, this as Carol L, Carol L, and Carol L. Uh, Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and I put it together with Through the Looking Glass. There are loads of different versions of this. Um, illustrated, non-illustrated, children's classics that are a bit more simplified. Um, explore. You do not have to have one sex text because that's the whole point. There are hundreds of texts. Um, if there are also lots and lots of different versions of this, including, yet again, Tim Burton. Um, uh, really cool, the recent versions, I'd have to say. There are older versions as well. So this is a wonderful text to teach. It's fun and insane. Um, you can link it to all sorts of cultural stuff. You know, Alice Through the Looking Glass, The White Rabbit appears in, in pop culture. Um, feed your head if you know the song um, so this is an excellent one and it's a great text uh, that's often taught on English too but it's something that you either know of or can access uh, or can specialize in if you're interested on top of that I've gone for uh, two excellent books if you don't know already the Northern Lights series um, has been made into a film part one of it it's called The Golden Compass and stars just about everybody. Um, uh, the film version well, was criticised and there's not been a part two made so far, which is a bit of a shame. It's one of those big franchises that maybe didn't get the reviews it should have. The books are wonderful uh, and I'd strongly recommend if uh, if you haven't read it that you get hold of it or look at it. He's now doing uh, La Belle Sauvage has been released, which is a sort of prequel to his Dark Materials. It's a fantastic universe. Uh, and Philip Pullman is an amazing writer uh, uh, that we will be uh, drawing on today, because today um, I will be mentioning, in, at least in passing, uh, his book of the year last year, A Grim Tales for Young and Old, a rewriting of the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. Uh, on point, certainly. Stardust by Neil Gaiman, another great book. Um, a little bit more challenging for the five to tens, but all of these have a base in um, film texts, and that's what's important. We might need to work with them in the classroom in different ways, but part of the idea is to look at what's the kind of competition, how do you engage uh, young readers um, and writers, of course, because those two skills are so strongly interlocked in the classroom and uh, in, in all of these cases what we've got is we've got very strong film versions or some of them new films that are coming out and uh, I think that's really important and what I've tried to reflect here. Um, we've also uh, got animal literature and for the five to tens we've taken that sort of Winnie the Pooh, Paddington the Bear, um, wonderful books uh, and extended them out up into um, uh, one of my personal favorite books of all time, Charlotte's Web. Um, if you haven't read Charlotte's Web, read Charlotte's Web. Um, E.B. White, it's absolutely wonderful. And uh, there are uh, numerous film versions of that um, uh, and sort of almost intertextual spin-offs as well from, from that sort of story. Um, it's, it's so poignant and beautiful. It really, really is. Um, the Wind in the Willows, Kenneth Graham's sort of Edwardian classic of life on the river. Uh, I put in the YouTube module um, the recent sort of Christmas version that's done where it's got like Mac Lucas from Little Britain in it and loads of sort of um, uh, excellent characters. Steve Coogan's in it, if you know Steve Coogan. Um, so it's, it's something that's constantly reinvented. Um, and it's a wonderful book, um, and it's something that has a lot, again, of film texts, possibilities for plays or drama, um, and that's the important point. On top of that, I've also just, maybe this was not the best of choices uh, in retrospect, um, 
but I love this book to death, so it happens to have appeared in here. It might not be the ultimate book to then uh, look at uh, five to tens. Maybe it would be for eight to tens for upper level. Um, but Tarka the Otter is uh, a wonderful, wonderful book, and it allowed me to include in the YouTube module the wonderful audiobook reading. It's an abridged version read by uh, Sir David Attenborough, which is just it's just perfect. It's too perfect. So. Um, while I would probably push people, if you were to make a choice, to 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 read Charlotte's Web, if you haven't, um, or The Wind in the Willows, which is fantastic, Tarka the Otter there as well, to have a look at another part of animal literature. And there are many other stories um, that you could draw on from this genre. Um, and then in science fiction, uh, I uh, didn't get hold of Mortal Engines in time to put it on the list. Otherwise, it would have been on as this third text here um, I would definitely put Mortal Engines on there as uh, like a steampunk alternative with the film obviously coming out and, and I love the film I know it got mixed reviews instead we've got the recently filmatized Ready Player One as a sort of um, gaming drama and I think it's important that gaming is reflected um, and you could have had a whole you know, sort of genre of, sort of game um, films and texts uh, we've got The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins uh, and uh, we've got Lewis Lowry's teen classic, The Giver, um, which is all, has also been made into a film version with Jeff Bridges uh, and uh, Meryl Streep, if I am not uh, incorrect there. Fantastic book. Um, works very, very well uh, in secondary school uh, and works very well as a pair with The Hunger Games as well. So you might want to think about reading both of those or reading one and getting a film version. The Hunger Games is just like a hell of a read um, and very easy to read as well. Whew, there we go. Charlie bangs on about um, some of the reading lists. So I will now that they've been separated, I will post across with clear uh, markations um, the uh, reading lists um, from each side. Um, here are some of the things that we're then going to uh, cover today. Everybody still with us? Mm. Coffee good. Um, I'm just going to pour myself some coffee there as well. Good. Okay. Okay. Well, so it's like we said. I'm very glad to be um, to have other people teaching with me this time. It makes me feel a lot more relaxed in terms of getting stuff done. Um, we may as well, whilst we're here before I go on to the the, the, the Emna plan and uh, have a look at the calendar a little bit and then we'll deal with York um, because in section two I'm actually going to do like I'm going to go through um, some ideas about literature because <laughs> I can't resist um, just to sort of set the ground to, to sort of provide a scaffold for um, our tasks for this afternoon which are already laid up in the events calendar oh where does this go Oh, that link's not, uh, where does that go? Let's go out of it. It should take us to, ah, right, yes, there we go. Fairytale modules. Um, let's make this a bit bigger. Why does that go straight to that? Okay, yes, there we go. Um, so, for each uh, module, and we're English 2, you'll also see up there that I'm doing English 4 concurrently, um, making up the entire uh, sort of text and culture approaches. And there, there are links between English 2 and English 4, and I'm hoping you'll be doing English 4 with me as well. Um, so I've done them together to sort of think about development and how we work with texts. And in English 2, Every single text we use is a text you use in the classroom, and that's our main focus. And my main focus is not on theory or literary theory. Though we, I'm going to scaffold you with some of the ideas. Uh, it's about uh, getting yourself in a place where you feel like you know a whole heap of books and stuff and things that you would like to use in the classroom or that you find uh, interesting, uh, whilst challenging yourself. Uh, and uh, 
uh, whereas uh, English 4, uh, we will probably look a little bit more at sort of methodology, though I've baked in, as you can already see some today, I'm going to talk about motivation. Um, but for this one, I've tried to, you know, just, it's, I haven't spent like loads of time, but this is an easy way of accessing material. So rather than me, you know, sort of saying, let's do this, let's do that, I've tried to look at um, either links to films where you can just go in and rent the film, you know, or, you know, you might have other dastardly means for getting them. So Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events. There's the film version, just a link to it to a straight rental, the one with Jim Carrey. That sort of combines, I think it's the first three books um, into a drama, but there's a lot more detail in Lemony Snicket. And yes, indeed, it is about time. It's also been um, uh, released now as uh, it's on Netflix. I haven't checked this out yet. I'm desperate to do this because this is going to be cool as well. So I think that works really well. It's not only a film. Um, we've actually got a different set of texts, which is a more detailed set of texts, which is on Netflix as well. How down with the kids is that not? Um, on top of that, totally free in the public domain. Oops. Tim Curry who's <laughs> wonderful reading the bad beginning totally free on audiobook as well there so if you've got three hours free in your car whack it on listen to that okay tremendous um and very interesting text as well i've got some support stuff which i'll be putting up on how to work with vocabulary with um uh lemony snicket uh Plus, it's, it's just bonkers, you know, and it's weird. Um, you know, it's got some great methodological stuff on why children just respond to weird stuff. Uh, and I think we all have. We've got various versions of revolting rhymes, including uh, a fantastic BBC television version. Uh, that's just one of them. But if you click on that, you will then get up that Cinderella. <laughs> Uh, which you can read in Revolting Rhymes, which uh, I've also got uh, there in Philip Pullman's excellent uh, Grim Tales. Um, but the entire series is there, and I think it's also been uploaded separately out of the module. Um, they're read by uh, Prunella Scales uh, from Faulty Towers. Uh, so uh, if anybody knows Faulty Towers, you'll know how wonderful that is um uh, so we've got some various other information bits uh goth girl we don't have an intertext with i'm sure we will soon and we've got a little bit about from chris riddell um we've got a little bit about neil gaiman because it's well worth just knowing who these people are um uh, francis hardiger on the lie tree um, there's an audio extract read by the lovely Amelia Fox there as well, which gives you a good chance to at least sample if you've got 15, 20 minutes um, part of the lie tree, which uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, excellent book. Um, uh, managed to find here and include. Um, so this is, uh, again, this is what we call a flipped classroom. Uh, rather than me sitting and talking through it, I'm, I'm going to, for every module, this, uh, this stuff will be here for you. Here's um, quite fun. This is a classroom project for an English group, I think their secondary school, and they, their, their task was to create their own trailer uh, for uh, the library, uh, which is a really good fun exercise. Um, instead of summarizing a book, uh, and you can make it into quite a, a lot of fun. There's, there's, I think there's a great one under diaries I've included, because you will find, you know, if you go out, you'll see quite a lot of people have obviously been working uh, like this in your cl in classrooms it's really good sort of like fun to see like oh people are doing this uh, there's a hilarious one under diaries of uh, um uh, the absolutely true diary of, uh, of a part-time indian um there's the rental tim burton's miss peregrine's home for peculiar children uh again steampunky victoriana gothic time travel uh, i mean it's fantastic stuff uh and um if I'm not mistaken, there's the entire audio book as well, which uh, I found cheekily hanging around in the public domain. So um, I haven't been able to find bits for everything, but where there are different versions, I strongly suggest that you familiarize yourself with the whole genre cluster. Um, and um, 
I've tried to vet. This. So, um, yes. The YouTube channel. <laughs> he's going back. There's the stuff on the text wall. The YouTube channel. Um, we just followed the link, didn't we? Uh, I actually linked in there. It went straight to it. And I will do that for everyone. All you need to know is that you can log in with exactly the same login as last time. I'll post the, the login uh, on the page which says syllabus because at the moment it's got the entire syllabus in Norwegian. And what I'm going to do is well, I'll take that off that page uh, and put it onto a sub page um, so it's tucked away. But I thought it's as well that we at least look at it and go through it today um, and have that. So we don't really have those questions later. Um, and then I'll put up there the straight link. There's no space on this page to put the straight link. It's uh, english.usn. Uh, you can see I'm logged in here at the moment. english.usn at gmail.com. It's the chief assassin in 13 Assassins. Fantastic Japanese-Korean production. Um, released last year, another film. Well worth seeing. Loved it. Uh, and uh, the login is exactly the same at the moment. I haven't updated it, so it's still uh, horse2018 exclamation mark horse with a capital H. I'll put that out again so you can see it. Keep, get yourselves logged in now. Uh, and so, yes, you should therefore be able to, uh, for each module, I will put the link in, and you should be able to click into it. But you should be able to just generally be logged in if you want to. I know you've probably all got your own, you know, other Google logins as well, but it means you can just choose them and you should then be able to go to uh, the YouTube channel. And um, with this as well, I might not be always up to date. I can't guarantee that I've done everything on time. I will add stuff as I find them as well. But generally, as you can see here, if I go um, on YouTube <coughs> and go to... Um, uh, sometimes it goes a bit weird and shows a strange selection, but if I look later down past Captain Picard's Let It Snow, um, best thing ever, uh, you should, there are some loose stuff as well. There's lectures down in the playlist, Spielist, or of course you get, you get it in Swedish. That was a bit dumb of me. Um, I'll be putting up today's lecture. This section will go in here as well. Uh, and then you can see, there we go, we've got the modules. You should be able to go to uh, Visamia, get a little bit of uh, plurilingualism in, uh, and go to uh, fairy tales there, uh, picture books, fantasy. I'm not sure if picture books is actually done at the moment. Uh, fantasy is ready to rock and roll, but we're doing this module till next week as well. So you've got that chance. Um, and I think if you just go to show more here as well, you should then get uh, module four diaries, um, six science fiction. There seems to be one missing, which is five. Um, I haven't got any good answer for that as well. Is that because module five is world language uh, and we'll have um, uh, all the other stuff there. You'll be able to have a look down as some bits where it's their multiple files that come in their own playlist. So Fantastic Mr. Fox by Ichabod Creep, <laughs> who's uh, a serial poster on YouTube with his own channel. Uh, that's him reading it. It's not, you know, it's it's still good fun, though. It's a good read along. Um, so, you know, you can get a flavor of stuff like that as well. There's even some music down in the section, lectures. Uh, and I will link to this sort of stuff from the um, the modules list. Uh, there's David Attenborough uh, reading Tarka the Otter, the television series of the Secret Diary of Adrian Mole, which was really one of the earliest sort of of the diary genre in in sort of children's fiction. Fiction. Uh, I think that's the 1971 version of uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, starring Gene Wilder. Uh, and from today's lesson as well, for example, I think we've got um, in the theory section, I might come up with a snappier title for that because it sounds boring already, doesn't it? We've got various uh, lectures and talks by specialists in the field that I'm going to want to talk about. We'll talk about books. 
it's all about uh, motivation, isn't it? And getting people engaged. Um, uh, and that's super important. Right. OK, well, I've managed to whiffle on for far too long already. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to take a break, I think. Uh, I promise to be better at taking breaks because often one of, one of my uh, issues in terms of classroom management that I definitely need to work with is I'm always desperate to do so much. I'm always overly enthusiastic. Um, I think we need to be, uh, <laughs> I need to be a little bit better at that. And I think last term um, we had limited time uh, and I had no help whatsoever. So I felt that it was my duty to get through uh, much more than maybe we should have. So uh, it's 10 o'clock. Um, I'm going to stop the recording there and say break time. And I know uh, people, uh, you guys, you've got the, uh, that's for the BA, isn't it, Mineta? And there's quite a few of you going off to that. Really important stuff for, the, for those of you going to, to that method course. It's on qualitative and quantitative um, research methods. Um, enjoy yourselves, focus, uh, you know, really take on board what's being said. Uh, Louise, obviously, I'm going to be uh, helping you with that. So I'll talk to you about that tomorrow. Um, uh, the next session is an hour and I will record that as well. That will go straight up onto YouTube. The last two sessions today are uh, task, TBL, task-based, content-based learning in groups. What I suggest you do is find the other people who can't attend uh, and do those. The tasks are in the calendar under events. Task one is book club, which is basically uh, in your group, uh, getting the books and saying, here's what I've read and talking about it. You can then use um, the presentation in session two for today as support because uh, I'm going to present ideas about motivation and I'm going to present ideas about literature and how we can talk about it. So you can use those. That's task one in book club. Task two is fairy tale mashup. Uh, and that's the bit we're going to be working with to, uh, this term, which is different styles of writing, narrative and descriptive, because last term we did the expository and the persuasive. And so I'm going to ask you to think about narrative and putting together a narrative uh, fairy tale mashup based on your reading or other experiences. But you can see details in the task list. Um, that's it for session one today. So um, we're now going to take a break. Um, and I will see you back here at um, 10.20 to start at 10.25 latest. Uh, I hope that's okay, and we'll do roughly an hour, maybe a little bit longer, so I can just get through the MNA plan. Um, so I will uh, stop the video. Stop!